Hey, I'm John Cannell. Today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a chocolate chip cake. So let's get started. And thanks to Ghirardelli for sponsoring today's video. First off, set that oven to 350 and let's grab some cake pans. You can use three six inch pans or two eight inch pans, it's up to you. I'm using three six inch pans because I haven't made a cute little cake in so long. So we're gonna start off with two and a half cups or 280 grams of all purpose flour. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And if you're using a fine grained salt, use less because that's gonna make a salty cake. I'm also gonna use two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, and three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nothing's wrong. I just realized that we're making a chocolate chip cake. <laughs> Where are the chocolate chips? I'm gonna whisk this up first and then grab them. Oh my gosh, I was even in that cabinet. So give this a whisk. You really want to distribute the baking powder, the salt too, but the baking powder is so important because you could have like a very lumpy or an even cake. Okay, whisk, 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 whisk. We're gonna set this aside and grab those chocolate chips. Today's video is sponsored by Ghirardelli. The Ghirardelli brand trademark is a promise to their customers to deliver a superior premium chocolate experience guaranteed by 160 years of heritage and quality. And whenever you use chocolate, you really wanna have like a really nice, delicious chocolate because not all chocolates are created equal. So if you're making an amazing chocolate chip cake, chocolate chip cookies, or anything with chocolate, you wanna have a superior product. And when you use Ghirardelli products, it makes all your desserts a bite better. During the holiday season, baking allows connections to be made. Ghirardelli takes part in delicious treats and recipes that bring you closer to your family and friends. I would go to San Francisco a lot with my mom because she was going to school there at the time, so I get to tag along. And I would go to Ghirardelli Square, which is the site of the original Ghirardelli Chocolate Factory, and enjoy some of those like delicious chocolate products. So I was hooked at a young age. I love using Ghirardelli baking chips because they're an extension of that 160 year promise of quality and tradition. So when you have those ooey gooey chocolate chip cookies, that Ghirardelli chocolate is gonna make them that much more amazing. And the same thing goes for this chocolate chip cake. Just wait till you try the recipe. It's gonna be so delicious. Okay, back to baking. <laughs> have my chocolate chips. We're gonna set those aside. They get added towards the end. Right now we're gonna grab our mixer. Stand mixer, for me, you could use a hand mixer if you want. So this recipe has three quarters of a cup or 170 grams of room temperature butter, unsalted. If you really wanna use salted butter, you can do that. Just reduce the amount of salt that you added earlier by like half a teaspoon. Always cream your butter first because you wanna give it Always lock your stand mixer first because you don't want that to happen. Now we're gonna cream our butter. Why is that happening? That butter might be a little harder in the center and you just don't want it to like not mix. So creaming your butter at the beginning just makes sure everything is broken up and ready to go. I don't wanna measure the sugar out um, with measuring cups, so we're using one and two thirds cups of granulated sugar. Go ahead and uh, measure that up. That's 333 grams. We're gonna mix this up on high for like three to four minutes until it is light and fluffy. I'm using a whisk attachment, so we're gonna beat a lot of air into that butter and sugar for a fluffy melt in your mouth cake. While that's mixing, I'm gonna measure out one cup of buttermilk. I'm also gonna scrape the bowl down. Right now it's time to add two teaspoons of a nice vanilla, so. Here you go. Ah, it smells. Three eggs, one at a time, no shells. Okay, so we've reached that point in mixing where it's like very soupy and eggy on the inside, but the outside is totally just sugar and butter. <laughs> so we need to mix this up so it's nice and homogenous. That just means that no matter where you are in the batter, every bit is exactly the same. 
All those little lumps are gonna disappear now and it's gonna be perfect. Okay, this is just about ready, but we're gonna do one thing for the chocolate chips. These are gonna taste so good, like just gooey, still like slightly molten. All right, I want about one cup of these chocolate chips. What's gonna happen is these are gonna go into a little bowl. And I'm gonna take maybe a tablespoon of the flour mixture here. And then just give these, whoa. Give these a little toss. I'll do this the safe way. Mix, mix, mix. Just to coat them in a little bit of flour and that'll help them kind of get suspended, basically. Just like a bird puffs up its feathers to trap warm air or you use a down, like a puffy jacket. Uh, this is the same deal. Little bits of air will be trapped with the flour, and then they won't all sink, which is nice. While mixing on low, <laughs> we're gonna add the dry in three batches, alternating with the wet. So mix on low, like a little bit less than a cup of the flour mixture, add that in, half of the buttermilk, some more flour, the remaining buttermilk, Oh, there was a chocolate chip in there. I was like, what happened? <laughs> it's not mixed in. There are still pockets of flour hanging around here and there. I'm gonna finish this off by hand. So if you look inside, there's, it's not mixed. What I wanna do is just use this whisk and fold it together a bit. And then, when it's almost there, I'm gonna add those amazing chocolate chips in. That's an ASMR moment. <laughs> and you know what, I'm gonna fold this in with a spatula. You really wanna be gentle with your batter right now. Overmixing is the enemy. So just fold in your chocolate chips right now and try and get them evenly distributed. That looks really nice. One thing I like to do, which is totally not necessary, is I just like to weigh each cake layer out. That way I know that there's gonna be nice and perfect when you cut into it. If you don't wanna do that, it's fine. Just use a skewer and see how deep it is and or use your like hands and say, hmm, is that about, is that about right? All right, so that's about 430-ish grams per cake pan. Almost ready for the oven, but we're gonna pop those cake strips on. I did not forget about them. Squeeze out the excess water. Squeeze out the excess air. <laughs> Squeeze the air out underwater. And then you wring them out. So they're really just damp. And you can make your own at home, you don't have to buy them. It's like a really fun project if you know how to sew. My cakes are ready to go into the oven, 350 center rack for about half an hour. You can check and know they're done because the centers will spring back, a skewer will come out clean, and you know also the edge will pull away. All those things say, I'm done. While your cake's baking or even cooling, it's time to make a delicious, creamy vanilla frosting with those amazing chocolate chips. I'm gonna add three sticks, which is one and a half cups of butter. Grams will be below. 113 times three is 339, 339 grams. Add a paddle attachment. And I'm gonna cream this butter up first just to make sure it's nice and just like smooth with no little hard parts left over. Okay, so cream that butter. While it's just mixing away, we're gonna sift out five cups of powdered sugar. It's like a lot of times you don't have to sift out your powdered sugar, but here's the but. Um, I'm gonna use the piping tip for the top of the cake and I don't wanna have any like bad moments. I want to have beautiful dollops on top. So just sift it out just in case there's any rocky bits in your powdered sugar. Big lumps. Not cool. That was what have clogged my piping tip. The butter is nice and creamy. I'm going to add in the powdered sugar like a few cups at a time. And also, just scrape the bowl down before you even start mixing. Um, otherwise, you're just going to have like butter on the bottom. But if you give it a scrape first, it really helps things out. While it mixes in, you can drizzle in some creamer milk. 
about a quarter of a cup will definitely do the trick. And we can also add two teaspoons of a nice vanilla. Mm. Vanilla, chocolate, they go hand in hand. This smells amazing, but right now we're gonna add the remaining powdered sugar. Okay. I'm always waiting for <laughs> to happen. Oh, and last but not least, we're gonna add in a quarter teaspoon, it's like a good pinch or two, of salt. It'll just help give some contrast and balance to this uh, frosting. Mix on low. If you go high, what's gonna happen is the frosting is gonna get a lot of air beaten into it, which is fine, but if you're decorating a cake, what happens is that you get little tiny air bubbles. So if you ever had a cake and you're like trying to smooth it out, it's like bubbles, bubbles, bubbles everywhere, it's because the frosting was beaten up and it got a lot of air whipped into it. Let's take a look at this. That looks nice and creamy. I think that's great. I'm gonna take out about half a cup, maybe a little bit more. Those are for my dollops at the very end. Right now we're gonna want about a cup of chocolate chips. This is a really nice moment just to have kind of a contrast to that creamy vanilla frosting. You're gonna like just bite into some delicious chocolate and that with the melt in your mouth cake and the gooey chocolate chips that were in the cake is just gonna be like a lot of textures and delicious flavors. So go ahead and add these in. Lock it off and we're gonna mix this in just so they're really well distributed. There, that looks great. Okay. The neat thing is that when I smooth this frosting out, you're gonna see the chocolate chips come through. It's gonna be really pretty. Okay, let's get those cakes and start decorating. These little guys spent 35 minutes in the oven and now we're gonna pop them out. You can see the edge pulled away from the pan and they're super flat because of those baking strips. Okay, think of thoughts. <laughs> That's nice. Ooh, so pretty with all those chocolate chips. There we go. These are gonna cool down, then they're gonna get decorated really quickly. First cake layer down. Actually, I'm just gonna put a dollop of frosting on the bottom so it doesn't slide. <laughs> I kinda need two hands for this. Uh, all right, this is to spread maybe like a quarter cup or so of this frosting, maybe a third of a cup. And the nice thing is the chocolate chips kind of tell you how thick the frosting is gonna be, so just spread it and it's done. Smooth that frosting out. One more layer on top. I love the proportion of a three layer, six inch cake. It's like very stately without being like so gigantic that you're trying to like invite people over to finish off this massive cake. It's like, oh, it's a cake for the family. All right, I'm going to cover that top layer in frosting. It's piping out really nicely. Then I'm gonna cover the side and smoothing is gonna be interesting with the chocolate chips, but because the frosting is so creamy, it'll be really easy. That's the thing about decorating cakes it always seems intimidating at first. Like you start doing it, you're like, oh, this isn't how it's supposed to be. But then it works out. Now we're gonna do the side. Here's the deal. <laughs> you want to smooth it out like top to bottom a bit. So get a nice thin layer going. This is very relaxing. Just covering your cake and frosting. It's a little bit leany, that's okay. Part of that is evening the frosting out. Part of that was the cake was actually tilting. So right now I'm gonna use a bench scraper and drag it along the edge. This is the part where you're exposing all those amazing chocolate chips. And if you see any problems, don't worry, cause this is just like the first layer of decoration. It's like the base of our canvas. Okay, here's the deal. This gets a chocolate chip skirt. It's really fun. So you just, it just gives it some more contrast just like that. And then I'm gonna poke a few in strategically so it has like an ombre 
skirt effect of like a chocolate gradient. Now we're gonna pipe those dollops on, just big beautiful dollops on top, nice and clean buttercream so they have a nice contrast for the cake and finish it off like a beautiful finial. Pure concentration right now. <laughs> ah, I love it. It's like bringing back all these memories of some of the cakes I used to enjoy. Ah, look at that. That is so good. The cake melts in your mouth. Oh, you gotta make this cake. If you like this recipe, check out my cake playlist. And thanks to Ghirardelli for sponsoring today's video.